part because many of our viewers wanted to know that uh, how does it work with foreigners who want to get treated in Slovakia? So because, you know, the system is not the same as many of the countries we travel from, from India, from states, from Asia or other countries, the system is slightly different. So we will move on to this part. So firstly, I would like to ask you this thing, like what are the requirements for foreigners to get treated? Because I know something like you need a local insurance, right, in order to get treated. Otherwise, you can't get treated, something like that. Then there is something like you need a permanent registered doctor to be registered under him or her. So can you explain these procedures for a foreigner? Like basically, uh, you need uh, first like this Tervali uh, Pobit, which is like the residency that should yeah, be like the temporary permanent, not, not temporary. Because as soon as uh, you finish your degree, you already have been there like six years. Mm -hmm. So uh, the same, like after five years, you should be able to get like the permanent one. Yeah. Then you choose in between uh, one of the three companies that provide insu health insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, like I know that there's like Union, Dobera, and the third one, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> public insurance, I guess. Yes, but you need to pay for them uh, yeah. if you are not working. Once you start working, the like your uh, your employer will pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I went for Tobera because mm -hmm. officially is the one that covers nearly everything, which means mm -hmm. you don't need to pay nothing. Mm -hmm. And once you have like your insurance, you should go and look for a GP. Uh, looking for a GP means that you should apply, and then mm -hmm. she or he will decide if. <laughs> she or he will get you as a patient or not. No, that's really interesting. <laughs> we never have heard about the system that the doctor is going to decide, I'm going to take this patient. I'm not going to take that patient. Like, officially, they, I think they should take all of them. But I remember going to my interview and she was asking me like, oh, uh, do you have like all vaccinations? Yes. Like, and I show her like my vaccination book or, but they are in like in Spanish. Yes, you have here the translation, but the problem is like, mm, I think like the diseases are the same, vaccinations are the same, so you should be able to understand. Oh, and what? Did, when did you get this vaccination? I got it like here. It's like, okay, when was the last time you get like your uh, tetanus shot? Mm, oof. And because that one I hadn't written on my notes, but mm -hmm. because we already have like the electronic health system in Spain and I know it's registered in my, in, in my card, but they don't have electronic health already. So I couldn't show her that I had my last shot of tetanus. And she was like, well, you need to get it. And, uh, and I just told her like, let me contact my GP from Spain and she mm -hmm. will write you when I will get it. And then they will ask you about like, if you, have any disease or like if you take any medication uh if you are a smoker non-smoker uh, how much mm -hmm. alcohol do you drink and i think based on your answers they should decide i've never heard anyone getting a no <laughs> okay <laughs> but it's just the system is very funny because you have to actually interview in front of the uh doctor in order to get admitted yeah like I think, I don't know like what are the requirements, but since I am like young and healthy, I think like it was like a yes for me, <laughs> but <laughs> probably like in 20 years time, I don't know. <laughs> like, but your doctor spoke English, like when you went? Mm -mm. My doctor didn't. So do you have actually. any like a uh, way out for international students? Where can they find in English speaking uh, doctors like from the university or something? Uh, there was like there's one doctor in Košice that speaks uh, English mm -hmm. and that basically is like majority of the students just go over there because she speaks English she's really nice and without any problem and uh, your university gave contact to her or like how did you come to know about her uh -huh. uh, now the university provides contact but when I reach uh, or when I started studying mm -hmm. uh, we needed to find out where she was mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's true that the timetables are like mm, completely like the hours are quite limited mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to go to emergency like not like yeah emergency department 
but you cannot go, or officially you cannot go straight ahead to the hospital. There's mm -hmm. one building that is like uh, open until 10 p.m. That if you have some emergency or something. I think that. Hmm, um, yes. You just go there and they will tell you, oh, uh, you just need to take this tablet or they will send you to hospital. Okay, so they have the authority to write an emergency in case your doctor is sleeping that time. Yeah. That's good. And also, do you need like, uh, like uh, for specialized doctor, if you need to go to, I don't know, some ear, nose, throat doctor or some uh, cardiologist or someone, you need to get a letter from your general doctor, right? In order to go to the specialized doctor. That's like basically like GPs, they do everything <laughs> over there. At least in Slovakia, they do like whatever you need to just go to GP and then you, you will be moved to another different doctors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Camilla, what about uh, some loopholes in the system like uh, about treating foreigners? Like why do generally foreigners face problem apart from the sp speaking English part? that there are less English speaking doctors. What else are the problems that a foreigners might face when they're uh, going for some medical checkup or some emergency that we can be like, Besides the problem, uh, mostly like the things like we have this European health system card. Mm -hmm. And what I say is like, if you are from abroad or foreigner, you need mm -hmm. to pay first and then like they will provide you uh, whatever attention you need. Mm -hmm. unless it's like a real emergency like okay. if, like you are not stable then you like obviously they they must treat you first and then you will pay everything it's true that after like if you go back to your country and you just show up everything they should return you part of the money mm -hmm. but abroad insurances are not recognized here right like i mean the international one international ones from i don't know like out of eu <laughs> Insurances? So, like the private ones are recognized. Private, private, some but of not EU, like uh, the one which are not belonging to EU. They don't the EU, no, because you have to pay everything in advance and then you need to request the money back from your country. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of mandatory for people to get a local insurance here? Yes, like, it's not mandatory, but it's recommended if you want mm -hmm. to get like good attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I think, uh, like, uh, because I think last year uh, I broke my leg. So it was actually good because I went to the entire medical system. But that time I had insurance, the government one. And actually, I didn't have to pay even a single penny, whether it was like uh, the x-ray, whether the doctors, whether the medicines and everything was included in it. So it was actually the system was good, though. No, the system is good. But if you don't show up with a local card, yeah, like then you need to pay everything that yeah. that is like, but like I understand because if you pay like local in health insurance, mm -hmm. that means that like you need to get the medical attention that you need. Yeah. Um, like if you bring like one of the European Union cards, that means that you are paying in another country. Mm -hmm. So you need here like to pay everything, which is um, sometimes complicated. Because yeah. you never know. You, How about you? <laughs> both. Like you kept the Spanish one also and you paid Dovera also here in Slovakia. No. Okay. You did, actually, when I got Dovera, I had mm -hmm. to refuse to my uh, home uh, insurance. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot have to, uh, like, it's basically not legal uh, to in Slovakia to have two health insurance activated. Okay. If they are coming like from government side. Mm -hmm. If it's private, yes. But like you cannot have like, for example, Dovera and the one that is in Spain. So you need to refuse to the one in Spain in order like to have the Slovak one. Because I remember a friend of mine, he had some problem, uh, like not very serious, but uh, that was curable. And he had to pay, I think, five or six thousand euros. He wasn't even admitted in hospital. Some dental issues he had and a huge amount he had to pay uh, in the end. And he wasn't even reimbursed by the company in India because over here they told we won't accept this insurance. And in India, they told we don't accept these bills. So he was like 
just straight away paying the entire thing. No, like I know a uh, similar case of a person like it was uh, appendicitis. Mm -hmm. He had to pay like full like operation and then full like <laughs> in hospital, and then they told him like they won't return anything, and he's like, Oof. like it sounds like a little bit expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why, like, there are some things that you never know that if they will happen or not. And, like, to be on the safe side, it's better, like, to pay one of the locals, local health insurances for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Camilla, for these uh, insights into this insurance and these foreigners treating, like, how our foreigners treated in uh, Slovakia with uh, health and medical things. Thank you, Camilla, for all your time and your guidance to our uh, viewers. And uh, thanks for uh, all these insights. Uh, hope uh, you will have a great time in Czech Republic. Uh, currently, how many months are you in Czech Republic, though? This is my second month. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I uh, hope you have a great time in Czech Republic. Enjoy the time over there. Uh, thank no, you. Thank you thanks a lot. No, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you also for your time and like hope like you have a great life in Kushitse and <laughs> hope like someday we will meet in person, like unfortunately. Definitely. <laughs> thank like, you. Measures, safety measures, but no, like, no, really thank you. Like it mm -hmm. was a great time actually. <laughs>